So this is really crucial. We are not saying that creatine and weight training increases bone mineral density, but it certainly decreases bone mineral density loss and really specifically around the hip region, which is crucially important for a lot of older adults because when they fall, if they if they land on their hip, they could be more susceptible to fracture. So there's a lot of anti-catabolic effects, and we've just shown in a long-term clinical trial an improved bone strength. So picture a pen or pencil. You can't crack it a, a, as much there. I think weight training is the main driver when it comes to bone. Um, the more muscle you have from an indirect perspective, there's more muscle pulling on bone, so that's very beneficial. Look at gymnasts. They have phenomenal bone mineral density and, and muscle mass there. So there's a lot of potential there. Um, it's not uh, overwhelmingly convincing, I think, because bone takes a long time to turn over. But this is interesting. The lowest dose ever been shown to be effective is 8 grams of monohydrate a day. Now, as we just talked about, 3 to 5 grams is great for muscle, but now you're getting into bone. What needs to happen is a dosing study. Could 5 grams over maybe 2 years be equivalent to 8 grams over 2 years or even higher? Uh, that is very expensive to do, um, but it's been in the back of my mind. I would just speculate that five grams over time will still benefit your skeleton, but you need such a large sample size to get these small effects, so either from a DEXA or a CT scan, and that's probably why we haven't seen it yet. But in all our clinical trials, eight grams, but the Brazilian group have looked at one to three grams for two straight years and not a single improvement. So weight training is there, and I think that's the big driver for many of the muscle bone perspectives. Yeah. So you so you think um, just supplementing with creatine by itself, even mm-hmm. if you're doing eight grams, isn't yeah. isn't really going to necessarily affect your bone health if you're not doing any weight bearing exercise. Yeah. Even even considering the you know, mm-hmm. p- preventing the the breakdown, I mean, preventing the activation of these osteoclasts that are breaking down the bone. Right. I would be very surprised. I think you need that mechanical loading from weight training or weight bearing exercise plyometrics to cause the bone to turn over. And then maybe creatine doesn't increase the resorptive or it increases osteoblasts a little bit more. Um, the cool thing with osteoblasts, it, it releases a cytokine called osteoprotogerin, which acts as a decoy, and that's been shown in in, in vitro studies there. So there is some cellular data, uh, which is a bit surprising when it comes to the, the skeleton, not just imaging. Um, but if I was to take eight grams, would I tell my parents to take eight grams and not work out? If I did, I don't think they'd expect anything on the bone. The bone is really stubborn. It's just like our brain and creatine. It's really, really stubborn. I think the main force is, is the driver of weight training. Yeah. What about someone who is, let's say, a postmenopausal woman mm-hmm. who who's experiencing some perhaps osteopenia? Yep. 